Hi friend, up to the last video, we have devoted our uh, discussion on uh, inductance of electric power line. Now, we'll start with, with another parameter of uh, transmission lines, which is called as uh, the capacitance of electric power lines. Up to now, we have covered uh, two different parameters. One is uh, the resistance of uh, transmission lines and also the inductance of transmission lines. Now, from this video onwards, we will start our discussion on capacitance of electric power lines. Let us see how to find the capacitance of electric power lines by having a small comparison with uh, how we have found the inductance of uh, electric power lines. Because if you have a comparison between the way of finding the capacitance and the way of finding the inductance, then uh, it will be easier for you to understand the concept. So let me start uh, the comparison by considering the capacitance first. Okay, or sorry, by considering the inductance first. So here, first I am considering the inductance of transmission line and we will see similarly how can we find the capacitance of uh, electric power lines. Now, first how can I find the inductance? Inductance uh, by definition, inductance is the ratio of flux linkage to the current. This is a psi which is flux linkage and this is current. So the ratio of flux linkage to the current is inductance which is expressed in Henry's. And what is the definition of capacitance? Mathematically, the capacitance uh, is defined as the ratio of charge stored to the potential difference uh, between the charged bodies. The unit of capacitance is uh, farads. Okay. So when you have the electric power lines and when we supply some potential difference between the electric power lines, consider this as one electric power line and this is another line. When we supply some potential difference between the electric power lines, these electric power lines go get charged. Is it right? So there will be some charges that are uh, distributed on the length of this uh, power line. So you have two charged bodies separated by some dielectric medium, which is air. Hence, there is a formation of capacitance in between the conductors, right? So the electric power lines are the conductors of uh, our transmission line are nothing but the charged bodies uh, which are charged by applying a potential difference between them by which there is a formation of capacitance. That capacitance uh, is given by the ratio of charge stored on any one of the transmission line to the potential difference between the lines. In this way we can define the capacitance. Okay. Now, uh, let us see the second uh, comparison means um, this comparison is based upon the method which, uh, which is used to find the capacitance. Here, uh, first we started with uh, flux linkage psi. Here psi is nothing but flux linkage. In order to get the flux linkage, we need to know phi, which is flux. In order to know the flux, we need to know what is the flux density or the magnetic flux density. Uh, this magnetic flux density is obtained from magnetic field intensity, right? So this is the step-by-step uh, -step, uh, procedure which we follow in order to find the flux linkage. After finding the flux linkage, by dividing this flux linkage with the current, we got the inductance. Is it right? So, uh, in the first step, we have determined the magnetic field intensity 
in the second step we have found magnetic flux density uh, which is given by b is equal to mu naught mu r into h and in the third step we have found uh, flux which is given by flux density into area and after finding the flux we have found the flux linkage uh, which is uh, the product of uh, number of turns and uh, uh, flux uh, and uh, it is also found by considering the portion of uh, flux linking the conductor so this is the step by step uh, method which we followed in order to find the inductance here also in the in case of capacitance what we will do is uh, uh, we will express actually the potential difference in terms of q and by dividing that potential difference uh, with q you will obtain capacitance so uh, the method which we will follow here is or the step by step uh, procedure which we follow is as we need potential how can i get the potential i can get the potential from electric field intensity if i know the electric field intensity i can find the potential how uh, let me write here potential or potential difference between two points is given by minus integral b to a uh, e dot dl this is the relation between the potential difference and the electric field intensity so if you know electric field intensity you can find potential difference easily now uh, of how can i find now potential dif uh, sorry electric field intensity electric field intensity can be found if you know uh, electric flux density which, which can be given by uh, e bar is equal to d bar by epsilon not into epsilon r where epsilon not is uh, the permittivity of free space or air and epsilon r is nothing but the relative permittivity right so e bar is equal to d bar by epsilon not into epsilon r so from d you can find e from e you can find v now from where i can find d uh, first i need to find d then from d i can find e then from e i can find vab then from vab i can find capacitance okay so in the first step we will find d bar in the second step we will find e bar in the third step we will find vab this is the method which we follow in order to find the capacitance uh, which looks almost similar to the method uh, which is used to find the inductance and as the third comparison here how can we find h or how can i find b or h both uh, by applying so here the law or uh, the principle or the law which help which is helpful in order to find uh, uh, the magnetic flux density or magnetic field intensity is ampere's law so by applying ampere's law we we can find h and b then from b we can find phi then from phi we can find psi from psi we can find inductance whereas here how can i find d the d can be found by using gauss law okay so gauss law is used to is used in order to find the electric flux density let me write different terms here as we are uh, uh, now introducing about the capacitance and uh, we are uh, uh, some way is not familiar with the capacitance so i am writing the terms uh, initially later uh, i don't want to write all these terms means the meaning of these uh, terms so vab is nothing but uh, v indicates potential difference so vab is nothing but uh, potential difference between a and b potential difference between a and b similarly uh, what is e bar e bar is nothing but electric field intensity uh, the unit for e bar is in volt per meter and what is d bar d bar is nothing but electric flux density 
whereas the unit of d bar is coulomb per meter square right and what is epsilon epsilon not is nothing but uh, uh, permittivity of free space or air permittivity of free space or air and uh, it, it is a constant value and its value is given by uh, 8.854 into 10 power minus 12 farad per meter or uh, it can also be given by 1 by 36 pi into 10 power minus 9 uh, farad per meter. We also have another term here uh, which is uh, epsilon r. It is nothing but the relative permittivity. Relative permittivity. It has no units because it is the ratio of uh, the permittivity of the particular medium with the uh, uh, permittivity of air. So epsilon now can be taken as the product of epsilon naught into epsilon r, where epsilon is nothing but uh, absolute permittivity or permittivity of the particular medium, which is uh, expressed in uh, farad per meter. Right. So this is about different terms uh, which are related to the capacitance and uh, the mathematical definition of capacitance and uh, the step by step procedure which we follow in order to find the capacitance as well as the physical law which is used to find uh, electric field. Right. So. Uh, so uh, now we'll understand uh, how to find the capacitance and we will follow this method in order to find the capacitance. So this is the reason why I have taken the comparison between inductance and capacitance. Now let us see how we can find the capacitance. First of all, we need to know electric field intensity. Is it right? So, so the first concept now is uh, electric field intensity electric field intensity of uh, a charged conductor electric field intensity of a charged conductor see here uh, a charged conductor is nothing but a transmission line so we need to find the electric field intensity of a charged conductor so consider consider uh, the charge of the conductor consider the charge of the conductor is uh, q coulomb per meter is uh, q coulomb per meter means for one meter length the charge of the conductor is assumed as uh, q coulombs now when you have a positive charge which is uniformly distributed on a current carrying conductor of some length uh, particular length uh, consider this length as l so if you have a positive charge uniformly distributed on the uh, conductor like this right now how will be the uh, electric field around this uh, charged conductor so the electric field around this charged conductor is always uh, radially outwards is it right so the electric field will be like this. We know this from our electrostatics that uh, a charged conductor is nothing but uh, an infinite line charge. We can consider it as an infinite line charge because uh, uh, the length of this uh, uh, charged conductor is very much greater than its uh, area or its radius. So we can call it as infinite line charge. Now, how can I find the electric field intensity? So just by applying Gauss law. OK, so we need to apply Gauss law in order to find the electric field intensity. OK, so what is Gauss law actually? So Gauss law states that uh, the total flux leaving a closed surface total flux leaving a closed surface is equal to is equal to charge enclosed by that surface charge enclosed by 
that surface right so this is gauss law if you want to know the amount of flux leaving a closed surface we need to know what is the charge enclosed by that surface now uh, how can i apply gauss law for this uh, line charge or for this charged conductor whose uh, length is l so by considering a gaussian surface uh, gaussian surface is nothing but a cylindrical surface enclosing this line charge because a uh, cylindrical surface has uh, three surfaces basically top surface bottom surface and sides so for all the three surfaces the electric field produced by this uh, charged conductor is uh, either tangential or normal hence we can select a cylindrical surface as uh, the gaussian surface for this charge conductor okay so let me draw this again so this is a charged conductor now i am considering a cylindrical surface of radius uh, x for example okay so this is the cylindrical surface of radius x considered as the gaussian surface for this uh, uh, charged conductor for this charged positively charged conductor of length l so this is the total length l right now uh, what is gauss law mathematically it is a closed surface integral of d bar dot ds bar is equal to q enclosed right so d bar dot ds bar is uh, is nothing but the total flux leaving the closed surface the mathematically this expression indicates flux leaving a closed surface and it is equal to enclosed charge right now how can i find this mm, d as the field is in radial direction the field is in radial direction away from this uh, charged conductor so i can consider d bar as uh, d rho a rho bar dot what is uh, ds bar uh, ds bar must be also in radial direction is it right uh, how can i express the uh, ds bar in radial direction so the uh, coordinates are rho phi and z if uh, mm, if rho is uh, considered as a unit vector what are the remaining terms phi and z the variation in phi is rho d phi and the variation in z is dz so we can consider it as rho d phi dz we can also understand like this the flux uh, uh, is cutting a area which is like this okay so i um, if i cut some portion of this uh, cylinder it will look like this so this variation is dz and this variation is rho d phi so the area is rho d phi dz a rho bar okay as it is a surface integral it is a double integration and it is given by q enclosed <coughs> if uh, uh, for 1 meter length if the charge is q and if the total length of the charge conductor is l so if i want to get the total charge i can get it as q into l is it right now for this integration uh, d rho is uh, d rho and rho both are constants and a rho bar dot this is dot product here a rho bar dot a rho bar is 1 so i am taking d rho into uh, in place of rho you need to take x because the radius of uh, this cylindrical surface is considered as x so i can consider this as x right and it is double integration of um, you left with uh, d phi dz now what is the limits of phi what are the limits of phi phi is from 0 to 2 pi and z limits are from 0 to l because the height of the cylinder must also be of uh, uh, l unit or l meter length so q into l is in the rhs side now it is a d rho into x into 
integration of d phi within the limits of 0 to 2 pi. So we'll get to 2, 2 pi and integration of dz is z within the limits of 0 to l. So we'll get l and it is equal to q into l. So l, l gets cancelled. Finally, you can obtain d rho as q by 2 pi x. How can I put this in uh, vector form? D rho, sorry, d bar is equal to d rho into a rho bar. We know this already here. This, in place of d bar, we considered this. Now it is equal to q by 2 pi x into a rho bar. What is the unit? Unit for uh, electric flux density is coulomb per meter square. Okay, so this is the expression of electric flux density uh, which we got from Gosler. Now, if you know electric flux density which is given by d bar is equal to, uh, let me see here, q by 2 pi x a rho bar, q by 2 pi x a rho bar, coulomb per meter square. How can I find E? E bar means the relation between electric field intensity and electric flux density or which is which is also called as a displacement vector sometimes. Now E bar is given by D bar is divided with epsilon. Now what is D bar? Q by 2 pi x into epsilon, right? A rho bar. What is the unit of uh, electric field intensity? Old per meter square, sorry, old per meter. Now, electric field intensity E bar is equal to uh, Q by 2 pi epsilon x A rho bar old per meter. A rho bar old per meter. Now the first task is completed or uh, uh, second task. First task is to find electric flux density and the second step is to find electric field intensity. These two are completed. Now how can I find the potential difference? So uh, we can find the potential difference in a simple way. See here, this is the cross-sectional view of the conductor I am considering. And I am assuming that the radius of the conductor is R. And also, I am considering two different points at two different distances from the center. So this is the first point. Let us assume this point as uh, P1. And this point is at a distance of D1 from the center. Similarly, I am also considering another point which is a point P2, which is at a radial distance of D2 from the center. Now, what I am interested to find is, I want to find the potential difference between 1 and 2 uh, due to the charge which is uh, distributed along the length of this conductor. Okay, So this is the cross-sectional view of the conductor. See here, this is one way of looking into the conductor. And I am seeing this view, this portion now. So what is this portion? It looks like a circular view. So this is the cross-sectional view of the conductor. Now, uh, let us uh, write down here itself. Now, I want to find, now, I want to find potential difference between, what I need to find, what I want to find, now I want to find the potential difference between potential difference between uh, point uh, P1 and the point P2 and which is given by V12. So I want to find the potential difference between point P1 and P2 which is given by V12. Let us find that. So it is uh, simply V12 is given by minus integration of this is the relation between potential difference and electric field intensity so it is uh, 2 to 1 when it is v12 the initial point is 2 and the final location is 1 because we need to move uh, the unit positive charge 
from infinite distance to that particular point means we need to do work against the field then only it can be considered as positive work okay so how can i uh, define potential difference uh, theoretically it is nothing but the work done in bringing a unit positive charge from one point to another point against the electric field when we are moving against the electric field now how is the electric field in this way you will have the electric field right in this way you will have the electric field so i need to move the unit positive charge against the electric field so the initial point must be p2 and the final point must be p1 okay let me write here so p2 to p1 uh, v12 is equal to minus integral of p2 to p1 uh, e bar dot uh, dl bar now it is given by minus integration of uh, what is the distance uh, at which uh, point p2 exist d2 so i can consider it as a rho uh, sorry here uh, these are the limits for x is it right x is a variable quantity here so the the d1 and d2 are the limits for x because x is the radial distance so x is equal to d2 and x is equal to d1 and what is e bar it is a q by 2 pi epsilon x uh, into or you can consider it as dot product so in differential length vector which is in radial direction you will get a d rho a rho bar in place of d rho i can take dx so q by 2 pi epsilon x ax bar in dot uh, dx ax bar will gives you q by 2 pi epsilon, epsilon x into uh, dx okay so now it is given by for this integration uh, the constant terms are q 2 pi and epsilon so i will get q by 2 pi epsilon out of the integration and you left with 1 by x and if i want to remove this negative sign i can interchange the limits so now you will get x is equal to d1 in the as the initial limit and x is equal to d2 as the final limit is it right and it is 1 by x dx what is the integration of 1 by x it is uh, log or natural logarithm of x so natural logarithm of x uh, within the limits of uh, uh, d1 to d2 what is the unit what are the units as this is the potential difference the units are uh, volts now v12 is equal to q by 2 pi epsilon how can i write this i can write this uh, ln of d2 by substituting the upper limit minus ln of d1 by substituting the lower limit now ln of d2 minus ln of d1 can be written as ln of d2 by d1 so ln of d2 by d1 and it is given by q by 2 pi epsilon and it is equal to v12 so this expression is very 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 important expression right so uh, a logic uh, is there in this equation when i want to find the potential difference between 1 and 2 i got q by 2 pi epsilon where q is the charge on that particular conductor and epsilon is the permittivity 2 pi is constant so i got q by 2 pi epsilon as coefficient and inside the natural logarithm at the numerator you have the distance from that particular conductor to the point p2 and in the denominator you got the distance from that particular conductor to the point p1 right for example uh, if i consider this as uh, uh, if if this is a charge if this is a charged body and from this charged body i am considering two different points whatever it may be one is a and another one is b how can i find the potential difference between a and b here um, if the distance uh, from this conductor to the point a if it is assumed as uh, uh, da and uh, to the point b if the distance is assumed as db how can i find vab it is simply q by 2 pi epsilon into ln of so in the numerator you must get the distance up to b 
and in the denominator you must get the distance up to a from this particular conductor so it is ln of uh, uh, now it is uh, db by da right so like this you can find the potential difference uh, by uh, seeing this uh, expression in a logical manner right so this is about uh, this uh, class so in this video or in this class we have understood uh, how to uh, means what is the method which is used to find the capacitance and uh, and we have applied gauss law in order to find the electric field intensity so first we have found electric flux density then we have found electric field intensity from that we have found the potential difference so in the next class by using this potential difference uh, we will understand how to find the capacitance uh, of a single phase uh, two wire line and from that how to get the capacitance of a single line right so so thank you very much uh, so i want to end this class now bye everyone